Hi, year four. Welcome to your flip classroom for the week beginning the 20th of September. This flip classroom is all about the reading, uh, the lessons that we're going to be doing this week. So I thought it might quite be nice if I read you the next chapter that we're going to be working from uh, in this coming week. Um, so I'm going to change my screen so you can see the book. We are reading The Iron Man by Ted Hughes and we are now up to chapter two. So one evening, a farmer's son, a boy called Hograth, was finishing was fishing sorry, in a stream that ran down to the sea. It was grown too dark to fish. His hook kept getting caught in the weeds and bushes. So he stopped fishing and came up from the stream and stood listening to the owls in the wood further up the valley and to the sea behind him. Hush, said the sea. And again, hush, hush. Suddenly, he felt a strange feeling. He felt he was being watched. He felt afraid. He turned and looked up at the steep field to the top of the top of the high cliff. Behind that skyline was a sheer rocky cliff and the sea. And on that skyline, just above the edge of it, in the dusk, were two green lights. What were the two green lights doing at the top of the cliff? Then, as Hoggarth watched, a huge dark figure climbed up over the clifftop. The two lights rose into the sky. They were the giant figure's eyes. A giant black figure, taller than a house, black and towering in the twilight, with green headlamps. Eyes. The Iron Man. There he stood on the clifftop, looking inland. Hoggarth began to run. He ran and ran. Home. Home. Iron Man had come back. So he got home and at last, gasping for breath, he told his dad, an Iron Man, an Iron Man, a giant. His father frowned, his mother grew pale, his little sister began to cry. His father took down his double-barreled gun. He believed his son. He went out. He locked the door. He got in his car. He drove to the next farm, but that farmer laughed. He was a fat red man with a fat red mouth laugh. When he stopped laughing, his eyes were red too. An iron man? Nonsense, he said. So Hoggrath's father got back in his car. Now it was dark and it had begun to rain. He drove it to the next farm. That farmer frowned. He believed. Tomorrow, he said, you must see what he is, this iron man. His feet will have left tracks in the earth. So Hoggarth's father got back into his car. But as he turned the car in the yard, he saw a strange thing in the headlamps. Half a tractor lay there, just half, chopped clean off, the other half missing. He got out of his car and the other farmer came to look too. The tractor had been bitten off. There were big teeth marks in the steel. No explanation. The two men looked at each other. They were puzzled and afraid. What could have bitten that tractor in two? There, in the yard, in the rain, in the night, while they had been talking inside the house. The farmer ran in and bolted his door. Hoggrass's father jumped into his car and drove off into the night and the rain as fast as he could, homeward. The rain poured. Hoggrass's father drove hard. The headlights lit up the road and bushes. Suddenly, the two headlamps in a tall treetop at the roadside ahead. Headlamps at a treetop? How? Hoggarth's father slowed, peering up to see what the lights might be up there in the treetop. As he slowed, a giant iron foot came down in the middle of the road, a foot as big as a single bed. And the headlamps came down closer, and a giant hand reached down towards the windshield. The Iron Man! Hoggrass's father put on speed. He aimed his car at the foot. Crash! He knocked the foot out of the way. He drove on faster and faster, and behind him on the road, a clanging, clattering boom went up as if an iron skyscraper had collapsed. The iron giant with his foot knocked him from, from under him and had toppled over. So Hoggrass's father got home safe. But next morning, all the farmers were shouting with anger. Where were their tractors, their earth diggers, their plows, their harrows? 
from every farm in the region, all the steel and iron farm machinery had gone. Where to? Who had stolen it all? There was a clue. Here and there lay half a wheel or half an axle or half a mudguard carved with giant tooth, tooth marks where it had been bitten off. How had it been bitten off? Steel bitten off? What had happened? There was another clue. From farm to farm over the soft soil of the fields went giant footprints, each one the size of a single bed. The farmers in a frightened, silent, amazed crowd followed the footprints. And at every farm, the footprints visited all the metal machinery and disappeared. Finally, the footprints led back up to the top of the cliff, where the little boy had seen the Iron Man appear the night before, where he was fishing. The footprints led right to the cliff top. And all the way down the cliff were tour marks on the rocks, where a huge iron body had slid down. A load of tide was in. Grey, empty, moving tide. Iron Man had gone back into the sea. So the furious farmers began to shout. The Iron Man had stolen all their machinery. Had he eaten it? Anyway, he had taken it. It had gone. So if he came again. So what if he came again, sorry? What would he take next time? Cows, houses, people? They would have to do something. They couldn't call the police or the army because nobody would believe them about this iron monster. They would have to do something for themselves. So what did they do? At the bottom of the hill below where the Iron Man had come over the high cliff, they dug a deep, enormous hole, a hole wider than a house, and as deep as three trees on one top of the other. It was a colossal hole, a stupendous hole, as the sides of it were sheer as walls. They pushed all the earth off to one side. They covered the hole with branches and the, bran the branches they covered with straw and the straw with soil. So when they finished the hole, it looked like a freshly plowed fill. Now on the side of the hole, opposite the slope up to the top of the cliff, they put an old rusty lorry. That was the bait. Now they reckoned the Iron Man would come over the top of the cliff out of the sea and he'd see the old lorry which was painted red and he'd come down to get it, to chew it up and eat it. But on his way to the lorry, he'd be crossing the hole. When at that moment he stepped in with his great weight onto that soil held up with only straw and branches, he would crash through into the hole and would never get out. They'd find him there in the hole, then they'd bring the, the few bulldozers, earth movers that he hadn't already eaten and they'd push the pile of earth on top of him and bury him forever in the hole. They were certain now that they'd get him. Next morning, in great excitement, all the farmers gathered together to go along to examine their trap. They came carefully closer, expecting to see the hands tearing at the edge of the pit. They came carefully closer. The red lorry just stood there as they had left it. The soil lay just as they left it, undisturbed. Everything was just how they had left it. The Iron Man had not come, nor did he come that day. Next meal morning, all the farmers came again. Still everything lay just as they had left it. And so it went on, day after day. Still the Iron Man never came. Now the farmers began to wonder if he would ever come again. They began to wonder if he had ever come at all. They began to make up explanations of what had happened to their machinery. Nobody likes to believe in an iron monster that eats tractors and cars. Soon the, mon the farmer, who owned the red lorry, they were using his bait, decided that he needed it, and he took it away. So there lay a beautiful deep trap without any bait. Grass began to grow on the loose soil. The farmers talked of filling the hole in. After all, you can't leave a giant pit like that. Somebody might fall in. Some stranger coming along might just walk over it and fall in. They didn't want to fill it in. It had been such hard work digging it. Besides, they all had a sneaking fear that the Iron Man might come again and that that hole was their only weapon against him. At last, they put up a little notice. Danger. Keep off. To warn people away. And they left it at that. Now, the little boy Hograth had an idea. He thought he could use that hole to trap a fox. He found a dead hen one day and threw it onto the loose soil over the trap. Then towards evening, he climbed a tree nearby and waited. A long time he waited. A star came out. He could hear the sea. Then, there, standing at the edge of the hole, was a fox. A big red fox looking towards the dead hen. Hoggarth stopped breathing. 
and the fox stood without moving. Sniff, 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 out towards the hen. But he did not step out onto the trap. Slowly he walked around the wide patch of raw soil till he got to where he had started, sniffing all the time out towards the bird. But he did not step out onto the trap. Was he too smart to walk out there where it was not safe? But at that moment, he stopped sniffing. He turned his head and looked towards the top of the cliff. Hogarth, wondering what the fox had seen, looked towards the cliff. There, enormous in the blue evening sky, stood the Iron Man on the brink of the cliff, gazing in there. In a moment, the fox had vanished. Now what? Hogarth, carefully, quietly, hardly breathing, climbed slowly down the tree. He must get home and tell his father. But at the bottom of the tree, he stopped. He could no longer see the Iron Man against the twilight sky. Had he gone back down over, over the cliff into the sea? Or was he coming down the hill in the darkness under the high skyline towards Hoggarth and the farms? Then Hoggarth understood what was happening. He could hear a strange tearing and creaking sound. Iron Man was pulling up the barbed wire fence that led down the hill. And soon Hoggarth could see him as he came nearer tearing the wire from the fence post, rolling it up like spaghetti and eating it. The Iron Man was eating the barbed fence wire. But if he went along the fence eating as he moved, he wouldn't come anywhere near the trap, which was out in the middle of the field. He could spend the whole night wandering about the countryside along the fences, rolling up the wire and eating it, and never would any fence bring him near the trap. But Hogarth had an idea. In his pocket, among other things, he did have a long nail and a knife. He took these out. Did he dare? His idea frightened him. In a silent dusk, he tapped the nail and knife blade together. Clink, clink, clink. As the sound of metal, the Iron Man's hands became still. After a few seconds, he slowly turned his head in the, in the headlamps. Eyes shone towards Hoggarth. Again, clink, 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 went the nail on the knife. Slowly, the Iron Man took, took three strides towards Hoggarth and again stopped. It was now quite dark. The headlights shone red. Hoggarth pressed close to the tree trunk. Between him and the Iron Man lay the wide lid of the trap. Clink, clink, clink. Again, he tapped the nail on the knife. And now the Iron Man was coming. Hoggarth could feel the earth shaking under the weight of his footsteps. Was it too late to run? Hoggarth stared at the Iron Man, looming, searching towards him for the taste of metal that had made that inviting sound. Clink, 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 went the nail on the knife, and crash! Iron Man vanished. He was in the pit. The Iron Man had fallen into the pit. Hoggarth went close. The earth was shaking as the Iron Man struggled underground. Hoggarth peered over the torn edge of the great pit. Far below, two deep red headlamps glared up at him from the pitched blackness. He could hear the Iron Man's insides grinding down there, and it sounded like a lorry grinding its gears on a steep hill. Hoggarth set off. He ran, he ran. Home, home with the great news. As he passed down the cottages on the way and as he turned down the lane towards his father's farm, he was shouting, the Iron Man's in the trap and we've caught the Iron Giant. When the farmers saw the Iron Man wallowing in their deep pit. They sent up a great cheer. He glared up towards them. His eyes burned from red to purple, from purple to white, from white to fiery, fiery whirling black and red, and the cogs inside him ground and screeched, but he could not climb out of the steep-sided pit. Then under the lights of the car headlamps, the farmers brought bulldozers and earth pushers, and they began to push in on top of the struggling iron man, all the earth they had dug from when they first made the pit, and that had been piled off to one side. Iron man began, as the iron man roared again, as the earth began to fall onto him. But as soon as he roared no more, as soon, sorry, he roared no more. Soon the pit was full of earth. Soon the Iron Man was buried silent, packed down under all the soil. While the farmers piled the earth over him in a mound and in a hill, they went to and fro over the mound and on their new tractors, which they brought since the Iron Man ate their old ones. And they packed the earth down hard. Then they all went home talking cheerfully. They were sure they had seen the last of the Iron Man. Only Hoggarth felt sorry, suddenly sorry. 
felt guilty. He, after all, threw the Iron Man into the pit. There we go. There's chapter two of the Iron Man. Quite a long chapter, but hopefully you enjoyed that read. When you're when you're listening to the reading, uh, and when you're reading through uh, on the screen as well, if there are any words that you're not too sure of, uh, jot them down. Um, and maybe try to find a meaning for them words, because in our lesson on Monday, we will be looking at vocabulary uh, that has been used in that chapter. And then for the rest of the week, we're going to be focusing on summarizing. So summarizing means to kind of, you know, what we've just read or what I've just read, what we've just listened to, what are the main points that have come out of it? And we're going to be teaching you how to uh, summarize chapters and stories in, uh, this week. So you may want to have a go at trying to summarize what's happened in that chapter. Definitely write some down some words that you're not too sure of or any vocabulary that you don't know. And uh, we'll discuss that in the Monday's lesson. Okay, guys, see you later. Bye-bye.